talk about Dustin Poirier. Where would we imagine Dustin is at within the world of the free format fighting systems, right? Look, he's getting called out at 170 pounds. I mean, just right off the top of my head, because it happened this morning, Gilbert Burns did something that appeared to call Dustin out. There was a little bit of a language barrier, so I'm not, I'm not positive. It went like this, Gilbert speaking. Hey, Dustin, all due respect, I suppose to fight Lahal for number one contender, you and me get matched up in this available co-main event spot. All right. But I was lost on that. I thought, at first glance, he's saying, I am supposed to go and fight Blahal, but you're a more attractive opponent for me. I had somebody else tell me, no, what he's saying is, I suppose that if we like to qualify for a match with Blahal for number one contender, we now need to figure that between the two of us. The reason I don't think it's that is I don't think that Gilbert is conceding a number one contendership to Blahal. And nobody has named Blahal the number one contender, and they won't. We've never had a time in the UFC where we were backed up twice. Like having Colby and knowing Colby's next, but then with that fight, not even booked, not even signed, not even a date set, we're going to back up who takes on the winner of that fight. We've just never had that. And it all comes down to the word suppose. Is Gilbert Burns saying, well, I suppose we should do this to get to here? Or is he saying, I am supposed, and he's letting us know that he's got an opportunity to fight Blahal? That's what I think. But I was the lone man. I had this discussion over at Bad Guy Inc. I had this discussion in the room, and they told me that I'm wrong. Everybody said that, no, Gilbert is now challenging Dustin. Winner would draw in to Mohammed, which is done within their own head, by the way. I mean, I've, I've got to add that. Whenever you put somebody in front of you, you got to be really careful. Not to mention if you're not right. That is quite literally how the definition, the colloquialism of a Sandhagen came about. Chopping your own toe off because you're not aware of the world around you. Baha Muhammad is not a number one contender to sit around and wait. In fact, it's quite opposite. They have something very big for him coming up. There's a debate and a belief by some that that was Rachmaninoff. There's a debate and a belief by others, and it's a school that I'm kind of leaning into, that's Kamara Usman. Either way, he has not been named a number one contender that is protected and gets to wait and gets to sit for the match. So I do not believe that Gilbert's assessment of let me go and fight anybody, in this case Dustin Poirier, have a victory, and that draws me into Blahal. I believe Blahal has an opponent already, which is either Kamara or it is Rachmaninoff, which will be a number one contenders match no matter what Dustin and Gilbert do or decide to do or how that outcome goes. That's my understanding. But when you are talking about Dustin, it's very wild. Because Dustin responded to Gilbert right away. Neither one was mad. Dustin wasn't mad that he got called out. Gilbert didn't call him out because he was mad. It was purely about competition. Gilbert said that. You know, be, be a top contender, spot open. What do you think? And Dustin responded, he said, well, the weight class is no problem. However, I'm not in tip-top shape, so I'm going to need, and then he put like an emoji sign of money. All right. I'm okay with all of these things, but I don't have any other ideas for Dustin down at 155, and Dustin is relevant because at the same time that I read this news, I also read an article by Benny. And Benny had asked the matchmakers, can I just not do the Charles fight? Like, I was going to do it. Charles pulled out. Can, can I just not do it and just go fight for the championship? And they said, well, no, actually, where your ranking's at, we, it would go to Poirier. Poirier has never been in there. He would be new, fresh parody with Islam. So if we stopped everything and froze it right where it is now, it would go Poirier into a world title fight. Now, the theory there must tell you that if Benny beats Charles, Benny then gets to skip Poirier in the rankings. I don't know that the rankings committee has agreed to that. I don't know that they have a history of doing things like that. And not for nothing, I'm not even sure that's the way that they would go do it. I mean, you guys understand Poirier is officially ranked number one at 55. Oliveira, I apologize. Charles is officially ranked number one. Poirier is ranked number two. Benny is number three. So if Benny 
can beat Charles number one, who's beaten number two, the matchmakers on, on this one phone call at least believe it can take Benny to the position he needs to be so that he can go and fight for a belt. I mean, we, we can go round and round, guys, and this is going to land somewhere, but it's never been a popular opinion. It's never even been what's fair. It's never even been what's right. In this sport, you will get what you fight for. There was, there's an old joke on The Simpsons where Homer told Bart, whether you believe it or you don't, you're right. And even though that's a joke, it's completely true. I know people that can't find a job. And you go ask them, well, what's out there? What did you look for? They say, there's nothing out there. I go everywhere. There's nothing. Nobody's hiring. I hear that. If you're, if you're leaving the house looking to not find a job because none exists, you will come home without a job. I and mean, they're just offering you an example. It's one of these really weird things. If you don't call yourself the number one contender, if you don't call for it, if you don't say, be damned with the rankings, I can beat all those guys. If you don't see an open date and call the number one contender to it and let the world know that he said no. This was supposed to be the fight. He says no. By proxy, I win. Where's my world title fight? If you don't go out and create these things, it's, it, it's a very bizarre world that we're living in because other guys are doing it right around you. I do not like being hard on Robert Whitaker. I, I really admire Robert Whitaker. As a human being, he is kind. As a father and a husband, he's great. I could only say nice things about him, but Robert Whitaker doesn't have an opponent right now. And he's not any closer today than he was yesterday, than it was last week, than he was last month or the month before that. He's healthy. He's ready. He's got a fan base. But when I watch his interviews, and I did this morning, this morning, Robert Whitaker said, now he, he said this the last time I saw him, he saw a month ago, he says, there's really nobody to fight right now. Right? Robert Whitaker is the guy that's going out into the streets to find a job that believes before he even takes his first step that there isn't one to be found. Robert Whitaker did an interview, and he said, there's no one to fight right now. I don't want to fight Chemayev. You know, he's not really an 85 pounder. I know he's been up here a couple of times, but he's not in the rankings. I, don't, I just want to fight ranked guys. I want to fight the best of the best. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a guy sliding in and getting opportunities. So he's going to have to do something before that. All right. Okay. Paula Costa, how about that? Well, you know, Paula Costa, hell, they offered him. Once to me, matter of fact, they offered twice to me. Fights fell through both sides on his on his end. I, I need a sure thing. So Paulo's out, he's not a sure thing. Chemayev's out, he's not ranked high enough. Adesanya's out, I've already fought him twice, they won't let me have him. Pierre is out because he left the division. I mean, gee, I got nothing to do. This was, this was Robert Whitaker, this was his interview. I have no idea what Robert Whitaker's ranked. I, I think he's the best fighter in the world that doesn't have a championship belt. That's what I personally think. I'm sure his ranking is very high. I bet a lot of money it's top three. I bet all my money that it's top four. But I don't actually know. There can't be a time when we start turning to those rankings. And I haven't even heard Robert Whitaker say, well, we have him for a reason. He said those words. We have him for a reason. Just so you know what that reason is, Robert, it's so that we have something to argue about. When people judge people, it's not fair. And if you want controversy, you have to have that element. We were not having enough talking heads and enough sports shows in a time where we were breaking into sports center or caring about Jim Rome or having Dan Levitard discuss us. So we came up with something that we knew would be controversial. We asked people who we never named. We've never named. We don't know if there's one of them, 10 of them, or if it's an AI system. Every Tuesday at 8 a.m. will give us rankings. And we've all agreed to go by those rankings. But just so you know, Robert, it has nothing to do with matchmaking or even fights for a title. We created the ranking system to create controversy. I'm very disappointed, but more than that, I'm shocked that you didn't know that. 